connect before you correct. So many of us instantly try to correct people and all it does is back them up. Think about how that feels for you when somebody, when somebody shares their feelings, right? Maybe they didn't put it together correctly. Maybe it's hidden in all this violent language and it's very blamey and all those things. Yes, right? We're not taking that away. But the question is, is does it feel good to you when you're feeling something and you're expressing and somebody tries to correct you before they recognize what's going on for you? Blessings and blessings. Oh, oh, it is so good to be with each and every one of you on this beautiful, beautiful moment, day, night, wherever you are in space and time. Today's transmission is about defensiveness and how it destroys relationships. Uh, I'm going to read a little short passage from The Seven Principles of Making Marriage Work by John Gottman, PhD. This is a book that I read. This is a person that I've studied with. I've flown to Seattle to work with him and his amazing wife, Anne. On page 36, he speaks about the third horseman of the death of any relationship, which is defensiveness. In here, he states, this is because defensiveness is really a way of blaming your partner. You're saying, in effect, the problem isn't me, it's you. One common form of defensiveness is the innocent victim stance, which often entails whining and sending the message, why are you picking on me? What about all the good things I do? There's no pleasing you. Defensiveness in all its guises just escalates the conflict, which is why it's so deadly. I'm going to stop there for a moment because this resonates deeply. I even underlined quite a bit of it when I first read this book, probably about six, yeah, six years ago. Here's the deal. That's been me for sure. I've put myself in the space of victim mentality. I've uh, chosen to see my wife as a villain and cast myself as the victim and the hero in the story. And in being together for 10 years, in being in this work and being a student of the work, One of the things that I've recognized is the most important piece to relationships actually thriving is being willing to repair fast. And um, I've been on the receiving end of this, and I've also been this, where some people think that repairing relationships is about defending what is said, or they feel like they can't repair, they can't come back to the love until they clear up their name, right? And again, I've been on the receiving end of this and I have done this myself where I'm like, no, we can't move forward until you take back what you said because that's not true. And one of the things that has been a guiding light and principle for me, especially as of the last year, is connect before you correct. So many of us instantly try to correct people and all it does is back them up think about how that feels for you when somebody when somebody shares their feelings right maybe they didn't put it together correctly maybe it's hidden in all this violent language and it's very blamey and all those things yes right we're not taking that away but the question is is does it feel good to you when you're feeling something and you're expressing and somebody tries to correct you before they recognize What's going on for you? You see, what's underneath all of those words is uh, somebody who is not regulated. Somebody who is going into a trauma response and wanting, desiring to be held, to be saved, to be um, met with, 
eyes and ears of compassion. And so for those of you in any relationship where you find yourself defending often, and maybe you have a culture of defense, I know that Alexi and I definitely had that. And we had to create a culture of apology and a culture of uh, compassion and a culture of empathy first before we started to address the things that may or may not be uh, true about statements and things that were said. And I just want to remind you that whoever you have a problem with, even if they do it more than you, the solution is correct. The solution is connect before you correct. Now, the, the question becomes, What does connecting mean to this person? We use language as a way to describe what we're feeling. Sometimes language makes things worse. So what I would suggest when connecting with a person who you would like to experience harmony with, peace with, abundance with, overflow with, is say less. We often spend too much time saying too much, trying to sneakily get in our little jabs and our little defenses while simultaneously saying, I'm sorry. I've had this experience many times where someone has said to me, you know, I'm sorry that you feel that way. But the truth is, is that you're X, Y, and Z, or I'm sorry you feel that way. And clearly there's something going on for you. And it never actually feels like an apology because there's all this other language and all this other explanation that's behind it. You want somebody to feel held. You want somebody to feel seen. You want somebody to feel, uh, you want to create and build a bridge for harmony for you all to get over it and on with it. Just say, I acknowledge what you're going through. And although what was shared isn't necessarily fully true for me, I just want to acknowledge that you're feeling something. And I'm so sorry if something about my way of being caused that. It's not my intention to hurt you. I'm so sorry. Right? That type of conversation, that type of leaning in, nine out of ten times is, is going to stop somebody in their tracks. It's very hard to argue with someone when they are acknowledging that whether it was intentional or not, that they are sorry. They didn't mean to hurt you. And, and oftentimes that's actually true. We often hurt the people who are closest to us, not on purpose, but just because we're close. We're in proximity and so stuff's going to come up. And so again, the reminder in this whole process is, and, and, and the action step is, I want you to think of someone who you are constantly defensive with and ask yourself, is there a way that you could reach out to them today and own some of that? Apologize for it. I dare you to do that and I dare you to see what happens. Because I can almost guarantee that even if they go, yeah, you are defensive. If you just hold it without trying to defend that and just say, yep, and I'm working on it. I'm so sorry and I love you. That'd probably be really hard for them to fight you on that. We're doing this thing together, y'all. A sign of maturity is a willingness to put down the sword of righteousness and be there for each other's nervous systems, be there for each other's trauma, be there in such a way that it begins to heal and create space and room for people to grow, to expand. Oftentimes we're just playing out these patterns, these family scripts, and we meet partners who fill out, fill the, the, the same role as, as our brother did or our sister did. And so we begin to scan and look for ways to create issues where there are none. So if you connect before you go to correct, you may not need to correct. 
Blessings and blessings. If this message landed with you in any way, I ask that you send it to a friend. Share it with somebody. And even if you don't, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for listening, for being here with me along this amazing journey. I've gone through a lot. I've been through a lot and I'm maturing. You know, I'm 43 this year and four kids, five businesses, one wife and a whole bunch of employees. And I'm learning, I'm learning how to navigate the human experience. And I appreciate that you appreciate me. So much love. See you on the other side.